Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Louie and Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Ben Stewart, uh, who just did part three of Philippians. We took a look at the world in Checkmate. Yes. And so what you're talking about is what God created you for, finding your purpose. Yeah. And yeah. so there's questions that came in about that. Um, sure. And um, generally around two questions around the same thing, but I understand that I'm here to fulfill God's design for my life. Yeah. Um, but how do I know what it is? And the same person asked, how does a young adult find their purpose? So right. how do we find, how, or how do we begin to find out what our purpose is? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I mean, um, I think what they might be coming at with that is you can give it different names, but sometimes theologians will talk about God's revealed will and his secret will, okay. you know, uh, his revealed will is the Bible, the word of God, the, the word he chose to give us for life and godliness. Mm -hmm. The secret will is, should I move to Dallas or Houston? Right. Should I be an engineer or an astronaut? Mm -hmm. And they call it secret because when it comes to circumstantial stuff like that, often he won't tell us. He just won't, and you can ask him, and he's not going to tell you because he wants you to use wisdom. That's why he wrote the book of Proverbs. Here's, here's how to function um, in life and navigate relationships and navigate business. And so what I would stress for the young person is not to obsess about what God's secret will. If, like, if, if he would just tell me if I'm supposed to be an architect for Jesus, I would be it. They go, no, he's told you uh, how to be someone who loves God. And so press into that. I tell young people that all the time, excel at the revealed things that God has revealed in his word. I'm meant to know him, right? Mm -hmm. Paul will talk in Philippians about progressively knowing him and chasing it like a runner chases the finish line. So I would say do that. Prioritize time in the word of God with the people of God, knowing God. And as you do that, he tends to change your heart, right? And the perspective of your heart. And that changes your priorities and your practice, as a friend of mine says. That will work out into your life. And as you're doing that, you discover what you're good at. I mean, for me, I was like, my job is to pursue the Lord. And as I did it, I realized, and I'm horrible at math. So I want to be the best math student I can be, but that'll always be about a three on the scale, you know? So I, he probably didn't make me to be, a, to be an accountant. And so that's what I mean. Pursue the revealed will. And as you do that, you stay attentive to how did he wire me and how am I best used to serve the people of God for the glory of God. And so that's obviously, uh, there should be whole books dedicated to that. There are whole books dedicated to that, but um, that's maybe the short answer. Okay, great. Okay, so in there, you asked a question, what if, what, what's the one thing that if I took away it would remove your existence yeah. or take away the meaning of your life. And for me and for the person who read the question in, my children immediately came to my mind. Right. So what if the children, what are the meaning of your existence? If they're taking away, um, this person saying, I'm not sure if I could recover. God blesses us with our children, but we have a difficult time not placing them as number one in our lives. Yeah. It's, I totally relate to that because the first thing I think about is my kids, you know, <laughs> and nothing stresses me out more. I'll have moments of panic sometimes where I'll think about some harm coming to them in a way that I can't control and I want to control it, you know. But ultimately, the best thing for my kid is for me to trust God with my life and walk with God and then trust God with their life because he, he rules it anyway. But I think if I say, no, I'm going to make my kid my source of meaning and significance in my life, a kid can't support that weight of the sense of value of a mom. Like, that's a scary thing to put on a kid. And they'll feel that. Mm -hmm. um, like my mom bad. isn't a success in life unless mm -hmm. I perform these things. That's an enormous stress to put on a child's life. But if I pursue the Lord, then I'm free to parent the child and go, my job is to bring them up in the instruction of the Lord and to trust them with the Lord and, uh, uh, and trust the Lord with them. And, and as I do that, I can function and they can function. But if I put on them the weight of my reason for existing, that's too much. But if the Lord took away my children, would I be devastated? Yes. I mean, the grieving would be 
unbelievable. And, and that's not disobedient to the Lord. We can weep bitterly. But at the end of the day, even with my face in the dirt, we're meant to say what Job did. If the Lord gives and takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What he meant by that is not, I think it's great my kids died. It's at the end of the day, it's Lord, I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my kids. I trust you. And that's what we always have to come back to. Do I trust the Lord or not with my kids? Ultimately, there's no safer hands to put our kids in. And so I always return there. But I understand the difficulty of that. Great. Okay. And so then we had one other question come in. Um, you did mention St. Augustine briefly in yep. um, your message today. And mm -hmm. so there's a question. St. Augustine is a prime role model for many, and he's mentioned often. Um, love to hear more about how he transformed his addiction to serve the Lord. Um, specifically, so much energy is wasted on sexual addiction and porn. Um, could you give us a little more insight into that? Yeah. Well, um, he's a fascinating person to study. You can buy the Confessions of St. Augustine are, is a famous book. You can buy it. I think you, you can even probably get it for free on Amazon. It's one of those kind of classics that sometimes come up for like a dollar or something. Much of the book is dedicated to his wrestling with a cult that he joined called Manichaeanism. I don't think you'd want to read all of that. It's pretty mind-numbingly boring. But you can read his conversion story, and it's pretty powerful. So I would tell them, pick up the Confessions of St. Augustine. You can do that. Um, there's also um, John Piper did a series of books where he did little mini biographies of different people in church history. And he did one on St. Augustine. And I would recommend that, especially if you're saying, how do I... Uh, if the grip of sexual addiction is in my life. Augustine, reading his confessions will tell you his story, mm -hmm. but if you want to go a step deeper, Piper's book I think is really helpful. And then there's a host of great resources on dealing with St. Augustine that are, I mean, dealing with sex addiction that are not connected to his life. And I would say probably the simplest thing to say now would be to um, plug into the church that has resources for that. There's recovery options here that if that's an issue, just reading a book's not going to solve it. You're going to need community around you. And so I would plug into the recovery options here at the church. Okay, great. Well, yeah. um, thank you for being back again today. Um, we always, we're talking to, love to hear the stories of Breakaway and what God's yeah. doing there. And that's where um, we'll be. Yeah, so um, you'll be back with us again before the end of the year. That's true. Um, but you'll be back in College Station for a few weeks at least before yeah. you come back. Um, so uh, join us back here next week for Postscript as we start Wisdom for Life. Thank you for your questions and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.